Saints, I hope you're doing good. I hope y'all in the spirit. I hope y'all ready for the Sabbath. It's almost here. It is upon us. It's the Sabbath. It's almost here. Thank God. And the title of the lesson today is The Roots of the Elect. The Roots of the Elect. I was reading my four chapters yesterday. I saw some precepts in there that I liked. And I was like, all oh, praise to the Most High. And um, I wanted to bring some understanding to this particular topic. So the roots of the elect. The roots of the elect. Now, that word elect, it's a beautiful word. It's a word that not many people know. But before we get into it, we're going to jump into the scriptures real quick. First Peter chapter 1, verse 1. First Peter chapter 1, verse 1. The book of First Peter chapter 1 and verse 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. So it says the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Now, these are the areas that Paul visited. Uh, excuse me, Peter. Well, Paul visited these areas too, but Peter. Can you give me a map real quick? He's just go on Google real quick and just uh, type in um, the journeys of Peter. So Apostle Peter writes the first letter to the Christian, the Christian Jews. I love it. The Christian Jews of much of Asia Minor, probably from Rome. All right, so you got those areas, Bithynia, Cappadocia, Pontus, Galatia, these are countries, right, in which he, Pamphylia, so on and so forth, these places that he was writing to. So it says Church of Jews. I'm glad it says that. All right, so go back to the Scripture. First Peter chapter 1, verse 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Pontus Galatia, Galatia, Cappadocia, uh -huh. Asia, and Bithynia. So these are Jews scattered in these areas. Israelites scattered in these areas. Go ahead. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. So it says, go ahead. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. So it says, elect according to the foreknowledge of God. So the people scattered in these areas are elect according to the foreknowledge of God. Can we read the, what elect is or who the elect are in the Bible? Isaiah 45, verse 4. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 4. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. So it says, for Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect. Israel, mine elect. So we read just a minute ago in Peter that the Israelites or that the people scattered in this area were elect according to the foreknowledge of God. Now we're reading that the Israelites are God's elect. So let's deal with that, right? Let's go to the uh, definition real quick. Let's look up elect, y'all. This is the definition of elect. Carefully selected, chosen. Chosen for salvation through divine mercy. Mm. 3A. Chosen for office or position but not yet installed. Chosen for marriage at some future time. So I like the first one. Carefully selected. Chosen. Elect means chosen. That's what it means. So go down to nouns because he said mind elect. That's a noun, right? Let's go down to, no to noun. It's one chosen or set apart as by divine favor. It says divine favor, meaning you and I cannot get in the way of it. It was chosen by God. before the, the creator that created us is the one that chose these people, right? So it said Israel, my elect, meaning my chosen, my set apart, a select, of exclusive, a select or exclusive group of people. So within Israel, because Israel is the elect, there's also an exclusive group of people within the nation of Israel, okay? And we're going to show you that, right? So it said, Israel, my elect, the chosen. Go to uh, Romans 8, verse 33. Romans chapter 8, verse 33. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Who going to lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Go ahead. It's God that justifieth. God that justifieth. Who shall... Who is he that condemned? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again. 
who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. So the God's elect is the us, meaning Paul. What was Paul? Romans 11. Romans chapter 11 and verse 1. I say then, have God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. Go ahead. God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. So the people that he foreknew was the elect that he chose. You understand? And those elect were the Israelites. That's what it's telling you right there in the book of Romans. The elect are Israelites. That's who we are. We are chosen. We are set apart. Right? Go to Wisdom of Solomon chapter 3, verse 8. We're just dealing with elect right now and the benefits of being the elect. Then we're going to get into how the elect must establish roots and stay ho and holding onto that root. Right? Go ahead. This is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3 and verse 8. They shall judge the nations and have dominion over the people, and their Lord shall reign forever. Go ahead. So it's talking about the elect. It said they shall judge the nations and have dominion over the people, and their Lord, T-H-E-I-R. Is that possessive? Yeah. Oh, okay. Their Lord shall reign forever. Go ahead. They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth. And such as be faithful in love shall abide with him. For grace and mercy is to his saints. And he hath care for his elect. And he have care for his elect. That select group of people, which we already have revealed, those are the Israelites. Now, within the Israelites, there is an elect, right? That's why we read earlier, who's going to lay to charge the God's elect? And Paul said, us. The us are the Israelites that believe on Christ. So we got to get that. Go to Romans chapter 9. It's in verse 7 where it said they are not all Israel. Christians still stumbling at Romans 9, y'all. Go ahead. Romans chapter 7, in, not, excuse me, Romans chapter 9 in verse 6. Not as though the word of God have taken none effect. Go ahead. For they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. So they are Israelites, but they're not all Israel, meaning they don't believe. That's why Christ told the Pharisees, you are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you would do. They were like, well, Abraham, our father, and you say you Abraham, your father. So how he, no, you are the devil. You understand? These, some Israelites are of the devil. It is what it is. You understand? But the elect, the elect Israelites, those that keep the commandments and the faith in the Son of God, those brothers and sisters are the ones that were chosen, that select group of people. We pray that's us. Romans 11 real quick. Verse uh, 7. Romans chapter 11 and verse 7. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it. But the election have obtained it. So all Israel has not obtained it, but the election has. Meaning what? That grace. Go ahead. And the rest were blinded. And the rest of the Israelites, that's why he said all Israel is not Israel. The rest of the Israelites were blinded. Blinded to what? They couldn't see Jesus. They couldn't understand he was the son of God. That's why they persecuted him. Right? Give me that in uh, Acts 13, 27. I got to show you all this. So even within Israel, Israel is the elect. They're the chosen people separated from the beginning by God. But within the nation of Israel, there is an elect. There is a remnant according to election that have obtained the mercy and the grace. Go ahead. Acts chapter 13, verse 27. For they that dwell at Jerusalem... And their rulers, because they knew him not. Because they knew Christ not. Nor yet the voices of the prophets. And then they didn't understand the scriptures they was reading. Which are read every Sabbath day. And they read those scriptures every Sabbath. Go ahead. They have fulfilled them in condemning him. See that? They fulfilled those same scriptures that they was reading every Sabbath in condemning Christ. Imagine that. Imagine reading all these scriptures about how the Messiah would come and he would not be believed on. And many people would persecute him and offer him up to be killed. And you the one that did it. But you've been reading it this whole time. You've been studying it. That's why he said, search the scriptures. You understand? Search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. Christ was saying, yeah, go back and read the scriptures. You're right. There is salvation in those scriptures. But the ones that speak about me are the ones that you need to be paying close attention to. 
and they were not doing that. So they condemned Christ, right? They fulfilled those scriptures in condemning him. Go back to Romans 11 and uh, read 5, because I didn't read 5. The book of Romans, chapter 11 and verse 5. Even so then, at this present time also, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. So there is a remnant. There it is right there. There is a remnant according to the election of grace, right? Watch this. Go to chapter 9 again. I want you to read verse 27. Romans chapter 9 and verse 27. Esaias also crieth concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. Go back to verse 5 and chapter 11 again. Romans chapter 11 and verse 5. Even so then, at this present time, also, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. So you got this remnant according to the election of grace that was chosen, that was set apart, that are in this exclusive group. And then you got the others that were blinded. So we showed you Israel is the elect. Now, you're showing, now we're showing you within the nation of Israel, there is an elect. There are those that believe on Christ and then those that are blinded. Those that are blinded are the ones that like to um, fight over street corners. They blind. They can't see that their brothers is more worried about us getting salvation as a nation than to fight over a street corner that you feed homeless Edomites on. <laughs> you ain't worried about that. You understand? Can you read? Go back to verse 7 in that same chapter. Romans chapter 11 and verse 7. What then? Israel have not obtained that which you seek it for, but the election have obtained it. So the election obtained it. And the rest were blinded. And everybody else was blinded. Go ahead. According, according as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, mm. eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. So they're not able to see it because they sleep. They're asleep. So they cannot receive that Christ is the Messiah given to here to give us grace. They cannot see that they need to keep the commandments and faith in the Son of God. They cannot see that us fighting over a street corner does nothing good for the nation. It make us look bad. Now our enemies taking clips of us having to subdue our brothers, and they saying, "Look, they don't even have. To, they ain't even um, together within what they believe." So we look bad in front of the people, right? Go ahead. And David said, "Let that table be made a snare." That table is the Bible, and let it be made a snare, I mean a trap. So they reading scriptures, and within the scriptures, they not able to, able to see what they're supposed to be doing. They're blinded, and the strange scriptures that they're reading have become a snare to them. Go ahead. And a trap. It's a trap. And a stumbling block. And they stumble over it because they don't understand. Go ahead. And a recompense unto him. And it's a reward unto them. A re recompense is a uh, reimbursement for your evil actions and your hatred for your brothers. The Lord bring them same scriptures to condemn you later. Go ahead. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see. And bow down their back always. And bow down their back always. That's why we're going through it right now as a people. Because many of our people's eyes are darkened. And every time we take five steps forward, here comes some stupidity in the nation of Israel that take us four steps back. Right? So there's an elect within the elect. Okay? Go to the book of Mark, chapter 13, verse 14. So let's deal first with that. Um, well, we're going to jump it back between both of them. So we're talking about an elect, right? So let's, let's talk about that elect for a minute. Mark chapter 13, verse 14. The book of Mark chapter 13 and verse 14. But when ye shall see the abomination of desolation. That's the white man. Go ahead. Spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Uh -huh. Standing where it ought not, mm -hmm. let him that readeth understand. Then let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains. So it's prophecy of 70 AD. And let him that is on the housetop not go down into the house. Neither enter therein to take anything out of his house. And let him that is in the field not turn back again for to take up his garment. So this is talking about 70 AD, but it's also is prophetic of in the future how we can't be worried about the things that we're going to lose in Babylon. Because it's going to get burned up. We can't be looking back for it. That's why the scriptures say, remember Lot's wife. Go ahead. But woe to them that are with child. And to them that give suck in those days. Go ahead. And pray ye that your flight be not in the winter. Go ahead. For in those days shall be affliction, such as was not from the beginning of the creation which God created unto this time. Neither shall be. So now he fast forwards to the future. He's talking about the future now. It says, for in those days. It's not talking about just 70 AD like we read earlier. 
it's talking about the future. How do we know it's talking about the future? It says, such as was not from the beginning of the creation which God created unto this time, neither shall be. Going into nuclear warfare. There's never, you think 70 AD is worse than the whole world on fire? No. So we know he done transitioned from just speaking about that time to the future now. Watch this part. Go ahead. And except that the Lord has shortened those days. See that? And except the Lord has shortened those days. Talking about well, the time that's coming, the persecution that's coming. Go ahead. No flesh should be saved. Because when no flesh be saved, meaning these bombs going to be flying all over the place and millions upon millions upon millions of people are going to die. And the Lord got to shorten those days. If not, would nobody be saved? Everybody would die. That's how evil is going to get on this earth. That's why I said the abomination of desolation is not just talking about during the time of 70 AD. It's talking about even the white man today. Remember when Bishop went over that class from, Na from uh, Nazis to NASA? Bro, that was heavy. These folks made bombs knowing that there's a possibility that we can blow this whole damn place up. But he was like, to hell with it. Try it anyway. Like, what? You ever seen Don't Be a Menace? Dude uh, did some crack or smoked some weed or something, and he passed out, had a seizure, died on the floor. And they all looked around and said, oh, man, man, he did. Hey, pass that. That's how the white man is. He's like, you, I just might kill us all. Press it anyway. He has become death, the destroyer of worlds, right? So except those days have been shortened, no flesh should be saved. Read that again. And except that the Lord has shortened those days. Go ahead. No flesh should be saved. Everybody would die. Go ahead. But for the elect's sake. Whoa, whoa. Now he's telling you why he's going to shorten those days of destruction. Read again. And except that the Lord has shortened those days, no flesh should be saved. Go ahead. But for the elect's sake. But for that chosen seed within the nation of Israel that the Lord loved, that believe on Christ, that believe that they got to keep the commandments. Go ahead. Whom he have chosen, Reed. he has shortened the days. Wait a minute. So when that time come, the Lord is going to shorten the days because the elect Israelites are alive and they believe. That's beautiful. And that's we hoping that's us. This is what we're striving for, y'all. But you're only elect if you endure unto the end. You understand? You're only the remnant of the elect that shall be saved if you endure unto the end. You cannot give up. Luke 18, verse 1. I'm going to read down to 8. Don't book, give up. The book of Luke, chapter 18, verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end. Go ahead. That men ought always to pray. So men have to always pray. Never stop praying. We've been doing this whole campaign for a while. Bishop Nathaniel and the leadership have been pushing it three times a day. Pray in the morning, pray at noon, pray at night. Or in the evening. Go ahead. And not to faint. Uh-huh. Saying. When they say pray and not faint, meaning you got to keep praying, never fall out of this truth. Never go back to sleep. When you faint, you lose conscious. Don't go back into the world. Ain't nothing good back there. Even though you're going through lust, even though you're not married, even though you don't have a husband, even though you don't have a wife at this particular time, and you burning because you want to be married, you want to be intimate, you can't rush the process. Because if you do... And then you and it don't work out or whatever. If you're only here for a Lord or if you're only here for a wife, well, when that falls through and it don't work out like you're supposed to, what do you have to fall back on? Nothing. So you're going to faint and go right to the back to the world and go right back in the sin. So keep praying. Don't fall away. Don't faint. Go ahead. Saying, there was in a city a judge. The Lord. Which feared not God, neither regarded man. He don't fear God because he is God. This is a parable. Go ahead. And there was a widow in that city. The widow is the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. And she came unto him saying, avenge me of my adversary. Avenge me of my adversary, my enemies. Go ahead. And he would not for a while. He said, no, I ain't doing it right now. Go ahead. But afterward, he said within himself, though I fear not God nor regard man. Breathe. Yet because this widow troubleth me. Yet because I, they keep calling unto me, praying unto me. Go ahead. I will avenge her. I'm on avenger. Lest by her continual coming, she weary me. Go ahead. And the Lord said. That's why we can't, that's why we got to pray without ceasing. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. Go ahead. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. Come on. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cried day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? Read again. And what? And shall not God avenge his own elect? Shall not God avenge his own elect? That's us. That's the Israelites. 
those that believe on Christ, those that's keeping the commandments, the elect within the elect, within the nation of Israel. He said, shall not God avenge his own elect? Go ahead. Which cried day and night unto him. Because we praying unto him day and night. Go ahead. Though he be along with them. Though he be along with me and though he ain't come and did it yet. Though we, it seemed like it's been a long time since Christ died and we ain't saved out of his condition yet. Keep praying. Go ahead. I tell you. That he will avenge them. He's going to avenge us. Go ahead. Speedily. He's going to come quick too. Go ahead. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? So who going to believe that? Who got enough faith in them to say, you know what? I'm trying to be the elect. I'm trying to endure unto the end. That's what it's saying right there. Go to Titus chapter 1, verse 1. The book of Titus chapter 1 and verse 1. Paul, a servant of God. And an apostle of Jesus Christ. Go ahead. According to the faith of God's elect. To according to the what? The faith of God's elect. According to the faith of God's elect. Go ahead. And the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness. Which is after godliness. And the acknowledging of the truth. What's the truth? You got to get it for me. Romans 2, what is it, 18? Or 20, one of them. Go ahead. Romans chapter 2 and verse 20. An instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law. The form of knowledge and of the truth in the law. So Paul was teaching the laws. You understand that? Paul was teaching God's commandment. Don't let nobody fool you. All right? Go back to where you was in Titus. Titus chapter 1 and verse 1. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect, and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness. Acknowledging of the commandments. Go ahead. In hope of eternal life. Because we hope for eternal life. Go ahead. Which God that cannot lie. Which God which cannot lie. Go ahead. Promised before the world began. Ooh, didn't we just read earlier about four new? That's what that means. Before the world began, the Lord had already chosen his elect that was going to endure unto the end, was going to believe on him in the last day, that he was going to wake up, and we was going to know his, Christ, his son as a black man. And we're going to know that we got to keep the commandments. And that's what you see going on today. Go ahead. But hath in due times manifested his word through preaching. Got to teach. Go ahead. Which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God, our Savior. According to the commandment of God, our Savior. Go back to 1 Peter 1. Verse 1 and 2 again. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 1. This elect we're talking about. Go ahead. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. To the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Pontus, Galatia, Galatia, Cappadocia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Read. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. Before the world began. Go ahead. Through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. So he says shalom to the brothers, right? Romans 8 verse 28. So we're running through these scriptures real quick to show you the significance of the elect and that there is elect people, a group of people within the nation of Israel, which is the elect. Go ahead. Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, mm. he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So there's no coincidence, y'all, that we keeping the commandments. There's no coincidence that you married the man that you married, that you married the sister that you married. Because a lot of us was married before we came in the truth. Or we was in a relationship before we came in the truth. And then we come in the truth, you say, you know what, we got to stop fornicating. Either we're going to get married or we're going to separate. Y'all say, okay, look, we're going to get married. We're going to do right by God. And then y'all go through your trials, you go through your ups and downs, but you endure. You fight until the end. You understand? And now you know, like, dang, okay, I see why the Lord brought us together in the time he brought us together, so we could be heirs of the grace of life. That's why, that's why that happens. You understand that? So now he's saying right here, whom he did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. This is the reason why your family member, they just don't understand you. They don't want to have nothing to do with you. They mad because you ain't the old you. You're not who you used to be, and they can't, they just can't grasp it. Because they only know you because God allowed you to be born into that family. But you was already known by God before you ever even touched down on this earth. Y'all understand that? 
you were predestinated to be conformed into the image of his son. That's the reason we walk like Christ. That's the reason we keep the Sabbath, keep the feast day. We're doing what he's doing, right? So the, elect, the elect, when you start talking about being elect, you must be rooted. In order to be elect, the elect, which is within the nation of Israel, that chosen lineage, you got to be rooted. If you guys elect, it's going to be proven through your actions. You're going to show I'm the elect. First Samuel 2 and 3. That's why you can't get weary and well doing. Some of y'all, every single week I watch the telegram. I watch brothers and sisters comment daily, answering polls, doing scenarios, coming to the school on Thursday to watch the class every week in person, coming to the school when we need to decorate, decorate the school, sweep the school. I see y'all doing this every single week. And I say, all praise to the Most High. I pray the Lord never take that spirit from that brother, from that sister. They do this every week like clockwork, even when they tired, even when they got to go to work. Guess what? If you're doing that in year three, you got to do that in year 15. If you're doing that in year two, you got to do that in year nine. You just got to keep going, keep praying, keep pushing. You can't never get weary. You got to keep on going. If you're the elect, you're going to keep going. You ain't going to stop. And even as you grow in the spirit, you're going to be able to put your spirit on other people. They'll see how you do it, bring their talents to the table, and then you're able to delegate so you can do even higher things in this truth. It's all about continue to do more, grow more. The Lord bring in more labors to help us with this beautiful, this beautiful uh, walk that we're in. Right? Watch this. Go to 1 Samuel 2 and 3. 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 3. Yes, sir. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. So don't be proud. Don't be arrogant. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him, actions are weighed. So God weigh your actions. So it's one thing to be the elect, and there's another thing to be that remnant or that group of people that by election were predestinated to be conformed into the image of his son. You're going to keep the commandment to the end. And you're going to, and people going to know because your actions. You understand? Watch it. Colossians 3 verse 12. Watch, what he, watch the word he used on this. Colossians chapter 3, verse 12. The book of Colossians chapter 3 and verse 12. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. So he said, put on, therefore, as the elect of God. So he called the brothers in Colossae in, in Colossi, that's built up and rooted in Christ. He said, look, y'all the elect of God. So be holy and beloved. Bow, have bowels of mercy. Have kindness. Be humbleness in your mind. Never get too high-minded. Always stay humble. Then it said meekness, long-suffering. Right? Come on, verse 13. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. So forbear one another. Forgive your brother and your sister. Don't be having a quarrel against each other. Go ahead. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. So it says forgiving one another. It said forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If it if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave him, so also do ye. I'm going to show y'all a video. It just popped in my head. Give me a second while I find it. I'm going to show you how our people that do certain things, they're not the elect. And by their actions, it shows that they're not the elect. I'm going to show you. Reverse 12 one more time, please. Yes, sir. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, uh -huh. holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. So you have to forbear one another. You have to forgive one another. I want you to play this video right here. You know, I've seen a video of, your, of yours where you said that feminism has conditioned black women to view black men as the enemy. It has. Feminism was financed by the CIA. Gloria Steinem, I think she was. Right, yeah. Mother of modern feminism because traditional feminism goes back to the 1800s, right, with Susan B. Anthony and those white supremacists. But Gloria Steinem was a CIA agent. They financed her. Her first feminist magazine they paid for. The CIA brought feminism into the white household to get the woman out the house and into the black household to turn the black woman against the black man. So this is true, Gloria Steinem. Bishop gone over this many times. But notice how he said the, the CIA gave him money, gave, gave, the, the, gave that woman money to sow discord in the black community. 
George, Gloria Steinem ain't even a part of our community. But yet, she has brought forth much discord and quarreling against each other. Now, every time you watch a video, it's man against woman, woman against man. The black woman saying the black man ain't this. The black man saying the black woman ain't that. We haven't forgiven each other. We haven't not forgiven each other for the hurt that has happened to us over time. When the black woman going to forgive the black man for being out of his right mind? When the black man going to say, you know what, let me help my sister get right. Let me marry her and get her, get her in the spirit. So watch this. Show the next video. Anybody know this couple? Pull it up real quick so everybody can see it before you play it. Anybody know this couple? There's Ike Turner and Tina Turner. Ike and Tina Turner are known for having what? A abusive relationship, y'all, right? Look at this. They have. They, there's no forgiveness here. There's no uh, forbearing of one another. There's no quarrel put and put to the side. This has happened to our community. Watch this. Play it. Well, Not showing up at the same time you're supposed to be there. The drummer, you see, Ike is at the studio all the time. Right. And uh, four days in a row without coming home. And he keeps usually the bass man and the drummer with him. And the very last day when it's time to leave, they go Paul, home that morning. in the background and say, say what, B? Because that's how Ike Turner was known. He was known for being abusive. He was known for being disrespectful, demeaning, right? Look at his mannerisms on national TV. She running her mouth, probably telling all they been. He probably mad she doing that. But then look how he looking at her. Like, I'd slap you right now if we weren't on national TV. And it would hurt my reputation if I did it, but I'd do it if I went for there. Go ahead. And they have to leave at 12, and you can't wake them up. So then we, we're worried if the drummer's going to get there or the bass player. But usually everybody makes it except those two. We, we're managed, we managed to get Ike out if we carry him. How do you manage to relax? With, you work at such a high energy level, both of you, when you do shows. How do you get down from it? Does it, does it take you a while to just... Uh, well, cool I, off after show. Hmm? I know how I does it. I doesn't talk. You saw how he went ahead to the side. I know she. Now, she cutting him off. She not letting him speak for himself. Dude asking him questions, and he she not letting him speak. So I can understand the agitation there. But this is what the scripture is talking about, about forbearing one another, forgiving one another. When you forbear somebody, you deal with them, even in their flaws, even in the things that they go through. You deal with them. If we the elect a God, we got to deal with each other right. You got to deal with your wife right, your husband right. Your brother, your sister, right? Go ahead, finish it out. <laughs> he saves his energy. It's easy for him. Uh, that's why he's always up, and you finish, and you're exhausted. Ike hasn't said anything. Uh, no, I'm serious. Is it? <laughs> well, he's after the show. Ike usually. See, look, look, look. He's so mad. He usually Paul. has a party. He, he, he's so mad, he can't take her touching him. Get into the mindset of this. Don't nobody know y'all into it, but y'all. Y'all into it right now. And it's bubbling inside. He getting angry and angry. He put on a smile, but he angry. She's over-talking him. She's not letting him speak. Now she's trying to put her hand on him, and he's trying to get her hand off of him. Go ahead. I don't know how relaxing this part. That's the end of it, right? So I just wanted to show y'all that we're, if we're going to move like this, we're not exemplifying that we guys elect. Read that again, verse 13. Verse 13. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. So we supposed to be forgiving others as Christ forgave us. But guess what? If you're not the elect, you won't do that. You're going to harbor that hatred. You're going to harbor that, 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 uh, that, that constant reminder that that person did something wrong to you. You're never going to let it go. What right? club was that at? <laughs> that was admit that uh, a lot of people don't even realize they... I've called her, she hasn't responded. I've called her more than a few times. But the Zulu nation, I'm like, what the hell is this? I know nobody know what I'm talking about. You're leaving me on the island by myself. I don't know what the hell Bishop's talking about. <laughs> That's what y'all do. <laughs> then after class, yeah, I knew what you were talking about. I just don't want to be caught out there. The hell is this? Get on my damn nerves. So read that again. Mark, Mark 4, 16, sorry, my bad. Mark 4, 16. Mark chapter 4. In verse 16, and these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, uh -huh. who, when they have heard the word, when they heard the word of God, immediately receive it with gladness. So they're happy about hearing that word. Go ahead. And have no root in themselves. But they don't have any root in themselves. I mean, they don't have anything to keep them here, keep them grounded. We're going to go into that root in a minute. Go ahead. And so endure, but for a time. Read. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth, for the word's sake, 
immediately they are offended they become immediately offended when that persecution comes for the word's sake you know why because they didn't have the word rooted in them they thought it strange concerning the fiery trial why is happening to me why am i going through this why my family don't want to deal with me you understand why my husband want to leave me why my wife want to leave me right go to wisdom of solomon four and three the book of the wisdom of solomon chapter four and verse three but the multiplying brood of the ungodly shall not thrive, nor take deep rooting from bastard slips, mm. nor lay any fast foundation. So it won't be a, a deep root. There will not be a, a, a lasting foundation. Go ahead. For though they flourish in branches for a time. So though they flourish in branches for the time, meaning they grow. Go ahead. Yet standing not fast. But because they're not rooted, they're not standing fast. They're not holding strong in this truth. They're not built up in the scriptures. Read. They shall be shaken with the wind. Every time some type of wind is blown, it said they're going to be shaken with it. Go ahead. And through the force of winds, they shall be rooted out. And through the force of that wind, they're going to be rooted out. Now watch this. This is what Jesus is quoting in Matthew chapter 7. Can we read Matthew 7, 19? The book of Matthew, chapter 7, and verse 19. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Notice how Christ always uses analogies uh, regarding husbandry or, you know, gardening or farming because he knew many of the people that were amongst him would understand what he was getting at. Read that again. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down. And cast into the fire. So every tree that doesn't produce good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Right? Go to uh, chapter 3. Hold your finger. We'll come right back to uh, Matthew 7. Go to chapter 3, and I want you to start at verse uh, 9. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 9. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. So don't think, think just because you're an Israelite. Go ahead. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. So it's not significant just to be a child of Abraham. We read that earlier. There are many of Israel that are not of Israel. Go ahead. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. You hear that? The axe is laid now to the root of the trees. Meaning Christ here to see if you got him in you or if you got the world in you. What you rooted in? Are you rooted in the world where you will never lead the world fully? You'll always have some type of root into the world. You'll always be grounded into the world. Or are you rooted in Christ so when the persecution comes, you're going to stand strong? When the affliction comes, you're not going to turn away. You're going to keep fighting because that root so deep. Go ahead. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down. And cast into the fire. So he said the same thing. Every tree that don't bring forth good fruit, he going to expose that root. He going to see if he's there, if he's your root, or if this world is your root. Right? Go back to Matthew 7, 19 again. Matthew chapter 7, verse 19. Go ahead. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Go ahead. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Go ahead. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. So this goes into that uh, elect. Now we're going into the elect of the, well, now we're going into the elect, meaning the Israelites, or the elect, meaning the remnant within the Israelites that believe. Because this is the Israelites is talking about. Because do you know they ain't talking about Esau? Esau don't have a chance at, the, at salvation. So it says, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, this is Israelites speaking, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Go ahead. But. He that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. That's the elect. Go ahead. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? Like Judas Iscariot, he cast out devils. Go ahead. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Now, why would he say that if they were rooted in Christ? They weren't rooted. When that persecution came, when the true understanding of the word came and you got corrected for being out of order in the congregation, when your Lord corrects you and say, hey, look, you need to go do such and such. You need to apologize. Sometimes 
sometimes you ask to do stuff in this truth and you don't feel like you're wrong. It happened. It happened to me before. I'm like, man, I ain't. I, what, apologize. What I do? I told such and such, such and such. That what the words say. You be literally justified in your thoughts to say no, but because your Lord asks, if you're a, run, or you're a sister, or because leadership tell you, hey, look, man, you need to go make that right. You got to take the high road in this position. You say, you know what? I'll pray to the Most High. It's something within me God want me to see about myself. Let me go and handle this business real quick, even though it's uncomfortable for me. So then what Christ going to profess, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. You're not a part of that elect. You're not rooted in me because as soon as the trials and tribulation came, as soon as you was asked to do something that you didn't want to do, as soon as you was corrected, it say, guess what? That's that root. That's that, 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 that ax being laid to the root to see if you're in Christ, if you believe these words. It's going to happen to us all, y'all. Go ahead. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. But rock is Christ. Go ahead. And the rain descended. And see, there you go. And the rain descended. That's them trials and them tribulations. That's them lies that the, the dragon spew out of his mouth against us. Go ahead. And the floods came. Uh-huh. And the winds blew. What's the word? And the winds blew. And the winds blew. Go ahead. And beat upon that house. And it beat upon that house. Go ahead. And it fell not. And the house didn't fall. Why? Because that house built on a rock, so it ain't going to fall. What is that rock? That's that root. That's Christ. Go ahead. For it was founded upon a rock. Go to 1 Corinthians, uh, what is it, 10 and 4? Just to show you all what the rock is. We're going to come right back here. And I had not forgotten about Wisdom of Solomon 3. And I have not forgotten, I mean, Wisdom of Solomon 4. And I have not forgotten about Mark 4. They all go together. I'm just going around a little bit. Great. First Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4. Here we go. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. So all the Israelites drank, drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. Uh-huh. And that rock was Christ. And that rock was Christ. Christ is the rock that is saying, if you build your house upon him and you root it in him, when they start saying, oh, they're a hate group. When they start saying, look how they treat their women. Look how they treat, oh, they're a purple gang. They beat women, stomping them. What the hell? They start saying stuff like that. You be like, no, I ain't never seen them do that. You don't have no evidence of them doing that in the scriptures. No, that's not a hate group. They teach us about loving our neighbor all the time, respecting our husbands, respecting our wives, providing for her and my kids, protecting them. They're not saying these things that y'all say they're saying. We're reading the Bible, and they're they doing what the Bible say. This is slander. This is the persecution of the righteous. You root it so you understand that. But when you're not rooted, you say, you know what, maybe this is a hate group. Maybe I am a part of something I shouldn't be a part of. Go ahead. But with many of them that God, them, God was not well pleased. Said for many, but with many of them, God was not well pleased. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. They were overthrown in the wilderness. Go back to where we was at in uh, Matthew 7. Same thing with our people, right? They understand that they're supposed to be doing right. They don't do right anyway, and they're going to get overthrown. Go ahead. Matthew, Matthew chapter 7 and verse 25. 25. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Go ahead. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. That's the same thing we read in Mark chapter uh, 4, where it says they had no root in themselves and only endured before a time. But as soon as persecution and affliction came for the word's sake, immediately they were offended. Revelation 12 is going to tell you what the flood is. Revelation 12, 15. The book of Revelation chapter 12 and verse 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, mm -hmm. that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. So it says, and the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood um, uh, after the woman. I'm going to show y'all. I'm going I'm to get some things for y'all. Yeah. Okay. We have this show, and we have listened to black women all the time mm -hmm. say stuff like that. Right. And other black men have been hearing the same thing, and they're frustrated. We always say we want leaders in our community, especially with black men. Now black men are like, you know what, at least the quality black men are like, you know what, I actually want to lead my family and my wife in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And we're being met with, well, I'm comfortable being strong, independent, and I don't need because no man. we can man. finally do that. We finally were feel free. This generation, we can finally be entrepreneurs, do things that we've never been able to do. So y'all have become selfish then? No, we feel like we can provide for our own kids by ourselves. It is no well, problem. Okay. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, 
See this? This happened every time. It's like it's a cesspool of wickedness. It's like trying to justify things and trying to say this and say that or whatever the case may be. And you see the same situation over and over and over. It's the same conversation. It's it's always about, okay, well, we can do this for ourselves. We don't need y'all. Like, So the black man, look, well, if you don't need us, then we'll get a passport. And then y'all say, well, if you get a passport, nigga, you weak. <laughs> or you can't handle the black woman. Or you can't. Why we got to handle you? You Are you an animal? Are you a dog? Because you handle an animal. You handle a horse. Are you a horse? Come on. Like, the justification in our mind is gone. That's why I said the water going to be cast out as a flood. That social media is cast out as a flood. To see if you're going to agree with the BS that you see on this social media, TikTok and all that. People getting famous, I was just saying dumb crap. Watch this one. Here's another one. Adultery. So, so you saw that right there. That's that hatred, that inner hatred in our community amongst our brothers and our sisters. Now we're going to watch this one. Play it. So dude come out, shirt off, all the women lusting. Look, Paula, that's Steph Curry wife. You see what she doing? She acting like she pulling off her wedding ring. Her husband worth $300 million. A full-time NBA champion. They was in college together, broke. She got everything that a woman possibly could want as far as financial is concerned. Well off. And in her feeble little mind, a dude come out, this Negro ain't got nothing going for himself but the fact that he got his abs ripped on TV. He's a model for, for that, I guess. I don't know. He come out and be subject. And this dude might be a freaking, uh, what they got, gigolo? He might be a male prostitute or a male stripper. I'm not saying the brother is. But he could be. And he could give you a disease, a sickness. But you say, ooh, let me take my ring off. I don't want him to see that I'm married. You stupid as hell. You that dumb? Play it again. This not, they not the elect. But guess what? You're going to be tried by this. You sisters that's single, you're going to be tried by this. We just heard about that uh, this week. Sister's been in the truth with her Lord however many years. Got six kids. She go out and cheat on him. Who going to marry her with six kids? She not going to get married. And if she do, the Negro she marry, he going to be a demon. God will never let an unlawful bed like that prosper. Are you crazy? It will never prosper. Stupid, simple, foolish woman. Just like this woman here, the, the serpent going to cast out a flood. You're going to be on your job, and you're going to walk in there, and there's going to be a guy that's real handsome to you, and he's going to work on you every day. Damn, the lady show looking good. Why you always wear them dresses, though? Tell me a little bit about that. And you're going to be so stupid, you're going to say, well, he'd say he believe in. He want to know more. Shut up. Don't be ignorant. That's Satan in a well-put-together package that you like. You understand? Play it again. Look, stupid self. Look at it, as a rock. Take this off. Revelation 12, 15 again. Revelation chapter 12, verse 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman. The woman is Israel, and Satan coming for all of us to pull us away from the Lord. Go ahead. That he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. That he might cause you to be carried away of the flood. Adultery is one of those things, brothers and sisters. Hey, give me 2 Corinthians 11 where it said angel of light. I think it's like 2 Corinthians 11 and 14, something like that, 13. Read that. 2 Corinthians, I said. Yes, sir. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 14. I meant, I meant 2 Corinthians. I'm sorry. That's what I meant. Go ahead. Uh, 13. Verse 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, 
transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Yeah, we're friends and everything. Tell you, they really believe. So I've been wearing friends all the year. I've been watching. Y'all watch how you are and you looking like, damn, he handsome to me. He 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 work at the job next to mine. He say he been watching. You know what I'm saying? Like he might come in. Let me go and give him some. He say he gonna marry me. You stupid. Go ahead. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. So Satan himself came down to angel of light. You think Satan came to Eve? Eve like a snake? No. He had the attributes of a snake. But he was a man. He was an angel of light that came down and transformed himself as if he was righteous and brought things to her that her husband had already told her to stay away from and she wouldn't listen. Same thing with the nation of Israel. Same thing in the last day. Watch this. Play that one. Check this out. It, these women nowadays, they getting hard. They just, they don't give a damn. This is a result of wickedness. Go ahead. And every time you Stand a chance. It's sad, but it's true. I'm way too good at goodbye. I'm way too good at goodbye. I'm way like, too oh, good shoot, at yeah. goodbye. I'm way too good at goodbye. Look, look. Come on. Now, whether this was staged and it's just a joke or whatever, okay, whatever. But that happened in real life. That stuff happened in real life. He FaceTimed and let her see herself on FaceTime with another man. Satan will try you if you got that spirit of lust on you. If you're not rooted in Christ, Satan going to try y'all. Try me. Try us. Go back to um, Wisdom of Solomon 4, verse 4 again. So that flood is the different doctrines. That flood is that lust. All these things. Go ahead. The wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4 and verse 4. For though they flourish in branches for a time, yet standing not fast, they shall be shaken with the wind. So what is talking about? This going into these children that come from an unlawful bed. A woman cheating on her husband and bringing in an heir for another. Those children that are brought in from adultery, if you were to cheat on your husband and get pregnant by another man, those children, God said, they may come, they may branch out for a little bit, but eventually they're going to be with it. Read it again. But though they flourish in branches for a time, yet standing not fast, they shall be shaken with the wind. And through the force of winds, they shall be rooted out. So this is also going twofold. It's also going into, like we read in Mark chapter 4, about not having any root in themselves. And when persecution and affliction arrive for the word's sake, word's sake, immediately they offended. You finish that out? That was verse 4? All right, go back to Mark 4, 16. So the elect got to be rooted, y'all. You got to be rooted if you're the elect. Mark chapter 4 and verse 16. Go ahead. And these are they likewise, which are sown on stony ground. Come on. Who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. So when they hear the word, they receive it with gladness. And have no root in themselves. But they don't keep studying. They're not getting built up. They're not fasting and praying. They don't come to the Sabbath. Go ahead. And so endure but for a time. And they only endure for a time. Go ahead. Afterward, when affliction or persecution arises, for the word's sake, go ahead. Immediately they are offended. Watch this. Go to Jude 1, verse 10. The book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 10. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts. And those things, they corrupt themselves. What they know naturally is sin because we're sinners by nature. It's the word of God that make us righteous. But by nature, we are sinful. You understand that? You will overeat. You will get drunk. You will uh, fornicate all over the world. You understand? Spread your seed all over the world. Have kids in all kinds of different countries and all that. Go ahead. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. So by nature, you're in the way of Cain. What was the way of Cain? Hatred and murder. Go ahead. And ran greedily after the era of Balaam. Money. Wealth. And you will, and that covetous spirit, you'll go after that first for reward. Go ahead. For reward. And perished in the gainsaying of Korah. And that lust for power and preeminence. Go ahead. These are spots in your feast of charity. Wait a minute. So it's telling you, these people sit amongst us at the feast days. They got this spirit on them. Whether it's Cain's spirit, whether it's Korah's spirit, or whether it's Balaam's spirit. Read again. 
These are spots in your feast of charity. They spots in your feast, meaning you can see them. You can see that they ain't no good. They don't really believe this. They not the elect. Go ahead. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. And they know they fornicating. They know they commit adultery. They know they doing dope when they leave the school. They know they getting drunk. They know the evil stuff they doing. They know they secretly trying to record phone conversations between you and them to send to the authorities, trying to get you to say something to condemn yourself or to condemn Israel United in Christ. Spies, feigning themselves just men. Right here it says, these are, these are spots in your feast of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. They eating good off the lamb and everything that we eating, knowing that right now they, in, they are an informant. Knowing right now they got their eyes on another man's wife, eyes on another woman's husband. Just waiting for that opportunity to get along with them. That's evil. And it happened in the congregation. Go ahead. Clouds, they all without water. Clouds, they all without water. They can't produce water, meaning wisdom. Go ahead. Carried about of winds. There it is again. Carried about of winds. Soon as a different doctrine come in, soon as they have an opportunity to go after their lust, immediately they take that opportunity and they run away. Go ahead. Trees whose fruit withereth. And the fruit that they were bringing forth, it starts to wither. They don't keep building. They don't keep pushing. Go ahead. Without fruit, twice dead. Twice dead because you were dead in the world. You come in the truth and then you go back in the world. That's twice dead. Go ahead. Plucked up by the roots. And what? Plucked up by the roots. Remember we read earlier in Matthew chapter 3, it said the axe is, uh, what did it say? The axe is given, is hit, greeted from it. One more time. What was that, 10? I think it was verse 10. Read that phone when you get a chance. Matthew 10. Matthew 3 and 10. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 10. And now also the axe is laid unto the root See, of the trees. The axe is laid unto the root of the trees. The Lord going to expose if you're here for him or if you're here for your lust. If you're here for him or if you're an informant. If you're here for him or you just want a husband. If you're here for him or you just want a rib. Go ahead. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Go back to uh, um, Jude 1. Jude. Verse 12 again. Chapter 1, verse 12. These are spots in your feast of charity when they feed, feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth without fruit, twice dead. Plucked up by the roots. Said plucked up by the roots. They're not rooted. They are not rooted. And since they are not rooted, they're easily plucked up. Let me show you what the root is. Go to um, Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 15. I'm actually almost done. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 3, verse 15. The book of the Wisdom of Solomon chapter 3 in verse 15. For glorious is the fruit of good labors. See that? Glorious is the fruit of good labors. Go ahead. And the root of wisdom shall never fall away. What's that root? And the root of wisdom shall never fall away. So it said, and the root of wisdom shall never fall away. Root of wisdom. You got that in 1 Corinthians 1? What root? 1 Corinthians 1, 24. What is the root of wisdom? The book of the first, uh, first Corinthians, chapter 1 and verse 24. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. So Christ is that root of wisdom. He is the wisdom of God. When you have that root of wisdom, you're going to bring forth good labors, good fruit. And when that axe is laid to the, to the roots, it's going to expose, oh, I can't, break, I can't break that root because that's Christ right there. When the floods come and beat against that house, since you built on the foundation of the rock of Christ, you ain't going to fall. You're going to stand strong. It don't matter what they throw at you. It don't, what, no, it don't matter what Satan come with. You're going to endure until the end. You will not fall away. And that's what we all striving for. We can't let these things pull us out of here. Revelation 22 and 16. The root, the root, the root. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 16. Mm -hmm. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root. What Christ say? 
I am the root. What did Christ say? I am the root. I am the root. Read. And the offspring of David. Go ahead. And the bright and morning star. Bright and morning star. He is wisdom. He is that light of the world. You understand that? Go to, um, what I had after that? Go to, uh, oh, Colossians 2, 6, 2, verse 6 through 7. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 6. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. So walk ye in him. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith. As ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Go ahead. Beware, lest any man spoil you. Through so, he, so he said be rooted, and then he said beware, lest any man spoil you. Go ahead. Through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. So look, he telling you again, you got to be rooted in Christ, built up in him, and beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. What's the rudiments of the world? Everything that this world got going on right now. All the evil that's going on in this world. Like, I'll give you an example. Here we go. You know, I'm going to show you some stuff. I'm going to learn you. Let me show you some things. Pull that picture up for me real quick. Go ahead. Chick-fil-A Thibodeau. Happy Team Member Tuesday. Say hello to Tavion. He has been with Chick-fil-A Thibodeau for over a year. His favorite position to work is on drive through Bagger, making sure your food is bagged fast and accurately. His favorite meal to get on a break is a grilled sandwich with American cheese and ranch. He mentioned he enjoys coming to work and making new friends every day. During his free time, he enjoys working out and sleeping. We are so appreciative of all your hard work and dedication. Tavion, we love you. Go down. Let's see Tavion. Look at this. Look at this. That's a young man. Or is it a transgender? The world will never know. The world will never know. But that look like a boy to me. Am I wrong? That's Tavion right there. This is how evil the world is going. And look, they let and they want to put this on their social media. Tavion got long eyelashes. Tavion got the weave in his head. That is a boy, Damon. And these are the things, these are the floods that's coming after you, the rudiments of the world. Even if you accept this, that's the market to be. If you accept it and say this is wrong, y'all shouldn't get on him, leave him alone. You're going to die with him if he don't repent. He can repent. Go to the next one. Play that way you can. Man should always make a way. I feel like I'm not going to work my hands to the, to the bones to provide. I'm not going to work 16 to 20 hours a day or a week to provide for my family. You're the man. You have the penis. Go get a job. Get three jobs. My man has two jobs. Go get seven jobs and two side hustles to buy me the things that I want because I'm a woman. So if a man going to go out and do that, a woman has to hold up her hand to the bargain. So the righteous woman don't think like that. Give me that real quick. I have made thee a help meet unto him. Chapter uh, Genesis 2.20, I think it is. Go ahead. Genesis chapter 2, verse 20. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. So he had, he had work to do. Adam had work to do. Go ahead. But for Adam, there was not found an help meet for him. But he didn't have a help meet. Go ahead. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. Go ahead. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the real, which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman and brought her unto man. Read. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. Read. Because she was taken out of man. Go ahead. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they shall be one flesh. Now give me the one in Sirach that says she got to have your mind. Seven, I think it is, 24, 26, somewhere around there, 7, 26. Yep, read that. Sirach chapter 7, verse 26. Hast thou a wife after thy mind? Forsake her not, but give not thyself over to a light woman. Let me show you a light woman. Give me the first one. This P. Diddy little girlfriend. Oh, 
poorly a whore. Like I'm gonna like with a, a, start with, over. Poorly a whore. Like I'm gonna like with a with a W. Like I'm a whore. But define that though. Like I'm a whore. <laughs> like, what are we doing here? Like she just said, I'm a whore. He said, okay, what does that mean? I'm a whore. Whatever you think a whore is, is what I am. I saw, I know, I saw another part of that interview where she started going in depth to it, and she's like, I'm just, you know, I'm sexually liberated. In other words, she can just have sex with who she want to have sex with. Meanwhile, P. Diddy having a little fun with her right now. He gonna, I think he gave her a baby. I think, I don't know. He going to drop her. Foolishness. All right, come on. It's like my ex-husband's six four. Okay. Yeah, I'm five so, eleven. I'm pretty tall, so I like them tall as well. I do get okay. So let's let's go because you know the six feet guy. So we gotta make a certain amount of money. Yes, yes he does. Okay. Yeah, absolutely, Kendra. My standards are very very high when it comes to that. Um, he needs to be making at least half a mil. Pause. She pause. She got on this this live with her braid. The micro braids is coming out. They're not even fresh, or whatever the braids call. They're not even fresh. She's not even presenting herself to be worthy of a man that make that type of money. That's the boldness of our sisters in these last days. This is not the elect of God. These are not that remnant that believe on Christ that understand that. Look, I need to bring something to the table to help this man, because that's what I was made for. You got that for me, Sirach 7? We're going to go back to that video. Start it over. Go to Sirach 7. Sirach chapter 7, verse 26. Hast thou a wife after thy mind? Forsake her not. Don't forsake that woman. But give not thyself over to a light woman. So the first woman, she says, I'm a whore. I'm just a whore. That's a light woman. This one right here, this is a light woman. Play it again. He got to be a certain height, make a certain amount of money. Like, what? Come on, man. You ain't even worth that. Not in the, the spirit she rolling in now. Go ahead. It's like my ex-husband's 6'4". Okay. Yeah. I'm 5'11". So, I'm pretty tall, so I like them tall as well. I do get... Okay, so let's let's go, because you know the six feet guy. So we got to make a certain amount of money? Yes. Yes, he does. Okay. Yeah, absolutely, Kendra. My standards are very, very high when it comes to that. Um, he needs to be making at least half a mil. What? Look how she's looking at her. 500K. Yep. Now, let me just, okay, so he has to be six feet. Mm -hmm. He has to make 500K. At least, yes. And, and you're the only woman. I'm the only woman, yes. He's faithful. Yes. Where he at? Uh, she said, what um, I'm hoping, at? you know what? I feel like I can find him. I'm, I'm, that's why I'm on your show, Kendra. I'm hoping that there's someone who is at that, at my level. So. Your level? See a single mama, 35 years old, I've been ran through with an ex-husband. Another man that shot up the club. Now she want another man to come behind him and take care of what came out the club. That don't make no sense. <sighs> These are the things that's coming after us. That's why the Bible said we cannot get caught up in this BS. We cannot get caught up with the ways of the world. Read Colossians 2 and 8 one more time. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. So her philosophy is get on social media with my hair jacked up, and somehow I'm going to get a man that, that make uh, two. So he, he got to make 500000 He can't make 490 He can't make 498 You know, five, so you 500000 After taxes or before taxes. Is it gross five hundred thousand or net five hundred thousand? You see how many questions you got to ask? Go ahead. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. So in order for us to be that elect, we have to be rooted and built up. We have to be rooted and built up in these scriptures. All right? Go to Mark 4 and 20. This is what we want to be. And I got, like I said, I got a few more scriptures. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run through these pretty quick. Try not to hold y'all too long. Mark 4 and 20. Mark chapter 4, verse 20. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it, and bring forth fruit, and thir some thirtyfold, some sixty, 
and some an hundred. And he said unto them, Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed and not to be set on a candlestick? Read 21 more time. I missed it. Verse 20. And these are they which are sown on good ground. So these, these particular spirits are sown on good ground. Go ahead. Such as hear the word. They hear the word of God. And receive it. And they receive. They need it. They see they need to change. Go ahead. And bring forth fruit. And since they got the word of God in them, they sown on good ground, they're going to bring forth fruit. Go ahead. Some 34. Some of their fruit going to be 34, which is great. Some 60. Some bring 60, which is even better. And some and 100. And some bring 100, which is even better than that. They bring forth much fruit for the name of Christ, the works of Christ. You understand that? Why? Because they rooted and built up in him. They not... Uh, deterred by the ways of the world or the flood or the rain that beat upon that house because they on that rock. When that ax get laid to the roots, it exposed that that root is of Christ and ain't no breaking them. They're going to walk with the Father. You understand? Sirach 10, 19. The book of Sirach, chapter 10, and verse 19. They that fear the Lord are a sure seed. When you fear the Lord, you a sure seed. I mean, you're going to grow. Go ahead. And they that love him, an honorable plant. And guess what come about that seed? That honorable plant and them roots, them roots get deep into the ground and they latch on and take hold of that ground, on good ground. Go ahead. They that regard not the law. But those that hate God's laws. Are a dishonorable seed. They're the dishonorable seed. They're not going to grow. Go ahead. They that transgress the commandments. Are deceivable seed. And if they transgress God's commandment, they are a deceivable seed. They will not grow. We want to be the first part. They that fear the Lord are a sure seed. It's sure. And they that love and love him are an honorable plant. They that regard not the law are a dishonorable seed. We don't want to be that. We want to be the first part of the priesthood. We want to be those that bring forth 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold because we believe this thing. And we fighting for this thing. You understand that? Watch this. Uh, Psalms 1 and 1. The book of Psalms, chapter 1 and verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. So blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor standeth in the way of sinners. And he don't stand in the way of sinners. He don't go after the rudiments of the world. He don't go after the traditions of men and not after Christ. Go ahead. Nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Go ahead. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. But his delight, his delight is in the law of the Lord. Go ahead. He that honorable seed. Go ahead. And in his law. Doth he meditate day and night? Come on. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. He going to be like that tree that's planted by the rivers of water, meaning he going to get much nurture and nutrients. What is the water? You know what I want. Hold your finger. Ephesians 5, 26. Hold your finger at uh, Psalms 1. We're coming right back. Right back. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5 and verse 26. That he might sanctify. And cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. With the washing of water by the word. So when it says, he, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. I'm sorry, I, ran, I, ran, I went too far. And he shall be like a tree of plant, a tree planted by the rivers of water. Meaning what? He's going to be nurtured by Ephesians 5, 26, which is the word of God. Go ahead. Go back to Psalms 1 and 3. Yes, sir. Psalms chapter 1, verse 3. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Go ahead. His leaf also shall not wither. His leaf will not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. And everything that he does is going to prosper. Why? Because he rooted and built up in Christ. He got the root of wisdom in him. He the elect. This brother right here, this sister right here, they are the elect. They're going to grow in the spirit. They're going to bring forth fruit, and they're going to endure to the end. Keep reading. The ungodly are not so. But the ungodly are not rooted. They're not a tree planted by the rivers of water. They sit in the seat of the scornful, right? They, they walk in the counsel of the ungodly and stand in the way of sinners. Go ahead. But are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. It said they like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Go ahead. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Go ahead. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. But the way of the ungodly shall perish. But the way of the because they are what? A dishonorable seed. He don't need them. That ax is going to hit them roots and it's going to expose, oh, you was of the world this whole time. Throw them in the lake of fire. That's what that's going into. The same thing we read in Matthew chapter 3. All right. 
uh, Romans eleven sixteen. The book of Romans, chapter 11, and verse 16. For if the first fruit be holy. If the first fruit be holy, that's Christ. The lump is also holy. The lump is the Israelites, the church, that's us. We're going to be holy. Go ahead. And if the root be holy. But if the, and if the root be holy, meaning Christ, what's in you, what's planted in you, if that be holy, go ahead. So are the branches. You're going to be holy too. You're going to be holy too because Christ is holy. He is the root. We are the trees and the branches that grow from that root, that, that, tree, that root. And on the ends of the branches hang fruit. Those branches are supposed to bring forth fruit. That's supposed to be us. We're supposed to be bringing forth that fruit. Right? Last scripture. It said holy, right? Give me that real quick in Revelation 7. I mean, excuse me, Romans 7 and uh, what is it, 12? The book of Romans, chapter 7 and verse 12. Wherefore, the law is holy. Uh -huh. And the commandment, holy. And just and good. And just and good. I know I said last scripture. This is the last one, last two, uh, in the same chapter. Isaiah 66, 17. Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 17. They that sanctify themselves and purify. 65 and 17, excuse me. Six, Isaiah chapter 65 and verse 17. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered, nor come into mind. Go ahead. But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing. And her people a joy. That's that elect right there. That's that new heavens and that new earth. And the former is not going to be remembered. You're not going to remember that. It ain't going to even come to your mind that we had we was in captivity and we had to go to work for the other for the other nations. And they disrespected us and threatened to fire us every day over BS. Right? You're not going to remember that. It says, But be ye glad and rejoice forever in the day in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. Go ahead. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem Read. and joy in my people. And joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. We're not going to mourn no more. Go ahead. There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that have not filled his days. For the child shall die in hundred years old, but the sinner, being in hundred years old, shall be accursed. Go ahead. And they shall build houses and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. Go ahead. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. That's what's going on now. Many of us, if you work in construction, you build houses that you can't even get a loan to buy. You can't even afford. Go ahead. For as the days of, the tr of a tree are the days of my people. Uh-oh, what did it say again? What's that? But as the days of a tree are the days of my people. We're going to live a long time. Go ahead. And mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. What are you saying? My what? Mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. That's the Israelites that believe on Christ. That's that elect. Go ahead. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble, for they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord. They are the what? The seed of the blessed of the Lord. Read. And their offspring with and them. And our children. Go ahead. And it, will, and it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. Before we even ask the Lord, for the, he already going to know what we're saying. Before, before we even ask him, say, Lord, give me, he gonna already, he's going to already just shazam, just show up. You understand? Go ahead. And while they are yet speaking. And while you're speaking, Lord, I sure would like to have a plan. Oh, <laughs> he's just going to pop up on a planet. Like, oh, wow. He, Lord, I would love for this planet to be, oh, they going to river. Just, what is this? You know what I'm saying? It's going to happen just like that. It's going to appear. Go ahead. And while they are yet speaking. I will hear. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. This is this is world peace. Go ahead. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. Go ahead. And the lion shall eat straw like the bullock, and dust shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, saith the Lord. And the animals not going to attack us, and they're not going to fight each other or devour each other. This is a beautiful thing right here, and this is waiting on God's elect, like it said in verse 22. All right? This is for God's elect, and God's elect must be rooted, y'all. We got to be rooted in these commandments, in these scriptures. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. 